Hi, this is Adam with DataNab, and today we're going to be taking a look at our Modbus enabled temperature and humidity sensors. If you go to our website, datanab.com, you can access those sensors right here Modbus enabled temperature, humidity, and CO2 sensors. Um, if you go to that page, it includes the CO2 sensors like that one right there. Um, but today, since we're only talking about temperature and humidity, we can go ahead and just click over here, the temp humidity, uh, just to view those. And if you do that, you'll see these three sensors pop up. Uh, this is the one that we just looked at before, right here, that's powered up. Uh, that's our WTH LCD ETH. And then we've got one that's got an extended cable with a probe at the end of that. So take a look right here. That's this guy. It's the same sensor. It's just got a two-meter cable extension with the probe at the end of the cable. And then the third one is our duct temp humidity version. And that is also very similar. It's just designed to be inserted into a duct. So you can, this would be on the face of the duct work, and then the sensor would be in the middle of the duct. Uh, so it can accurately get the temperature and humidity near, more near the middle rather than right at the edge. So that's what the, the longer probe is for. All right, let's get into it here. So as we said, those are the three sensors we're taking a look at today. Each of these have an Ethernet interface on them. And that's so that they can speak Modbus TCP over IP right here. They also have an RS-485 interface. That's so that they can communicate using Modbus RTU over RS-485. And then they all have two analog outputs. And those analog outputs can be configured for 0 to 5 volts DC or 0 to 10 volts DC or 4 to 20 milliamp. And that's if you wanted to maybe use an external controller or a master controller or a PLC to read the temperature and humidity from these guys uh, electrically instead of communicating with Modbus. I drew up a handy dandy little diagram here. Um, this was just simulating like a Modbus master. It might be a computer with Modbus Pull on it or any other Modbus software. Um, and that, that Modbus master can communicate over Ethernet. In this case it would be Wi-Fi to a router. And then from the router you've got your sensors maybe on the LAN or even over the internet. So remotely you could have other sensors and this mask would be talking over the internet or over Wi-Fi or over LAN to these sensors with Modbus TCP. So this guy right here, that's kind of how it's working right now. Here's our, our Cat5 cable. That's the orange cable. This is our power cable. And that's just going uh, to my computer here. And I'm talking to it over Wi-Fi. And I'll show you the, the Modbus pull screen here, what that looks like. So Modbus Pull is a really handy tool you can download from uh, the internet. Uh, they've got, a, I think, a free trial you can use for a while. Uh, this is showing our temperature in degrees Fahrenheit times 10 and degrees Celsius times 10. That's what those two registers are. So 83.8 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's what we're showing right there. And then this other register over here, register 304, shows our humidity times 10, so 44.2%. Uh, just bumped up here 44.4 percent and as you can see it's rising probably because I'm talking uh, right now at the sensors so that's again that tool is Modbus Pull I don't know how well you can see it but you can download that I think from modbustools.org and use it for a while for free and then buy a paid version really handy little tool you can uh, save values to Excel or CSV files um, things like that so another way you could talk to these is through, a US, through RS-45. And in this case, I've got a USB to RS-45 little diagram drawn. So you go USB to the converter, and from the converter, you can go out to the sensor of the RS-45. So those would be the different ways you can talk to these guys with Modbus. Now let's take a look at the sensors themselves. Um, sorry, I'll try to hold the camera with one hand and, and push the buttons with the other here. So. Here's what the sensor looks like on the outside. There's a little probe on the bottom. It's got some holes in the back for mounting. Hinges there. All right. This guy, this extended version, I've got the cover open, so it's the exact same inside as this, this other one, except for the, the way that the probe connects to the PCB through that cable. But what it looks like. See that Ethernet port. You can see that we've got other sensors in the same line that might support CO2. I showed you one at the beginning of the video. Um, 
and pressure is coming in the future. So, but this one you can just see it's humidity and temperature only. Uh, down here there's a little uh, jumper, and depending on how you set that jumper, the out analog output will uh, output zero to ten volts DC, zero to five volts DC, or four to twenty milliamps. Right now in the left setting on the two left pins, you can see it's zero to ten volts. Here's where the connections are made inside. I'll move this cable. There's the power connection at the top. Works actually with DC or AC. You can see that little note in the bottom there. This next one down right here, those are the analog outputs, so your temperature output and your humidity output in the ground. And again, those will output different things based on what this, this jumper over here is set for. And then we've got at the bottom our Modbus RTU over RS-45 connection, if you were to use that. On this sensor right now, we're only using the Ethernet connection. So we're not reading the analog outputs, and we're not talking RS-45. We're just talking Modbus TCP over IP. Now I'm going to get in the menu here for you. So to enter the menu, I push the right button. All right, and then you see your options, and now I can use the up or down buttons to scroll through these options. Since this doesn't have CO2 and this doesn't have pressure, I can't go into those menus. There's nothing to see there. All right, but it does have temperature, so if I push the right button to enter that menu, I'll be able to see what the temperature sensor is set to, which is 85.1. Uh, if this was a CO2 sensor, that internal value would also be reading something. I can change the units from, oops, I got to go down to that. Change the units from Fahrenheit. So I enter it with the right arrow. I change with up and down. So I can change to Celsius and then accept the change with the right arrow. And now on, if I go back out of the menu with the left button, it'll show me degrees Celsius. And then if I go back to this Modbus pole window, that second register down would be the one that applies in this case, 29.6 degrees Celsius. But since we're in the United States right now, I'm going to go back in there, go down. It's still on that last menu that I had used. Hit the right button, up or down changes, the right button accepts, and now we go back to Fahrenheit. To get out of this menu, I push the left button. All right, so that's the temperature menu. If I go into the humidity menu, it allows me to enter a calibration offset, and actually you don't enter an offset, you just enter what the actual humidity should read. So let's say I had this in a really controlled environment that had been stable for a while, and I knew that the actual humidity was 45.3 instead of 42.3. I could push this right button here, and then I could use the up arrow. Sorry, it's hard for me to reach with my thumb. I can use the up arrow to set that to 45.3. I'm not going to do it right now. And then I'd enter. And then it would automatically apply the offset. Um, those offsets you can also change in the Modbus registers. And then if I go onto the miscellaneous menu here, this is where I can do things like set the IP. So right now I have this set to a static IP so that my computer can just talk to it directly right now without being on our company internet. Um, that's what this cable is. It's just a crossover cable going from the sensor to the laptop. Um, but normally they would come in uh, DHCP mode. I'm not going to change it now because I want to keep talking to it. But normally it would be coming in DHCP mode and it would automatically pick up an IP when you plugged it into your network, assuming there was a DHCP server enabled on the network. Um, you can see the subnet and gateway and all that stuff. This is the Modbus TCP port, but the default is 502. That's what pretty much everyone uses. After you made those changes, if you changed anything about the IP on this uh, set of menu parameters, you go in here and you'd have to go hit right arrow to enter that. And hit up or down. Oops. Sorry, my... This is difficult with one hand. Oh, it, it hadn't changed anything, so I can't... I can't uh, make the change here, but if I go in here and change, if I go up here on this menu, and I change something that so it was different, and I went to here, I could say change it, and then it would repower it. Actually, let's do it right now just so you guys can see. I'll go into this miscellaneous menu. 
I'm going to go up here. I'm going to change my uh, IP to 104. All right, and when I do that, my Modbus pull will stop working because right now it thinks it's at 103. But I'm going to change it just so you guys can see. Go over here to the right, to the right, to the right. Use my up arrow, change it to 104. Right and arrow enters the or makes the change uh, be accepted. Now I can go down, 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 down to this next one, and now it says it's got that available. So. Since it saw something change, I can now enter this menu, push my arrow till I say, say confirm, hit right on here, and now you'll see what happens. So it has to actually repower now. And you can see over here, my Modbus pull is now saying timeout error. When this comes back up, I'll show you what the power up looks like right now. Do a little couple checks. And la da 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 da. There we go. Um, come down here. Let's make sure that that change was. Yep, there's our 104 that we just set. So now, if I want my Modbus pull to work, I gotta go back here up to my connection. When I say connect, sorry, I'm already connected. I gotta disconnect. And I'm gonna reconnect at the new IP. So instead of 103, I need to enter 104. Hit OK here. And now we're talking again. See, these are our poles, our sending poles, and uh, we're receiving data again. This side over here is still looking for the old address. You can see what address it's looking for right down there. I'll disconnect. There's a shortcut. And then I'm going to reconnect up here and enter those parameters. The new IP of 104. And hit OK. And now you can see this guy is communicating again. The errors aren't incrementing anymore. We're at 39.1. 39.1. So that's how you change the IP address if anyone was wondering. Uh, go back in here. Continue through this miscellaneous menu. This is the device ID for Modbus, so you need to see the ID right here. You need that to match. Uh, so in Modbus Pull, you can go in this little shortcut here for the read-write definition, and that slave ID, 254, needs to match that ID. All right, which it did, which is why we were able to talk. Uh, if I was talking RS-485, then this baud rate uh, would be something that would need to match, but we're over Ethernet, so we don't have to worry about it. We're talking Modbus. If I wanted to set a, a date and time in here, I could. It's got an RTC, which is actually used. Um, I mean, it's not used on this sensor, but it, maybe it'll be used for something in the future. Uh, there's the time. You can set a password to prevent people from messing with it. Um, there's an alarm that you can enable for the CO2 sensors. Uh, this sensor, it, on this temp humidity version, this doesn't mean anything. And then also on the CO2 sensors, there's a status line that you can enable, but it doesn't mean anything on these. So, all right, that's, uh, that's the menu for these. So, hopefully, this has given you some idea of what these temperature and humidity sensors are about. I feel like they're pretty, uh, pretty feature-rich sensors for the cost. Um, you can communicate with Modbus. You can tie into them with analog outputs like we talked about before. Uh, Modbus TCP over IP or Modbus RTU or RS-45. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach us on, on the bottom of our website is our contact information there. Feel free to shoot us an email at info at datanab.com. Um, but hopefully this helps and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.